All right, so each month we're jumping into altcoins and this is no different except now it's November and we're gonna jump into some altcoins and you need to keep your eye on here in September. Welcome back, my name is Paul Barron. All right, so here on TechPath, as you guys know, we cover a lot of technology in the blockchain space as well as EVs, robotics, AI, autonomy, all that good stuff. So make sure and subscribe if you like that kind of tech. Uh, we are gonna get into some altcoins today to really kind of help you guys look at maybe some projects that, one, there, there are some in here that are very notable. There are some in here that have not yet cracked open. And the idea is to hopefully present this to you. So when you're looking at your altcoin treasure chest, maybe one of these gets to fall in it and you look toward holding it uh, in the altcoin season. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin, but primarily I wanna to get to a couple of projects that really are moving and one of them is Alluvium, and Alluvium is one that we've been watching for quite some time. A lot of people have been pointing to this as the new NFT gaming platform that we should expect in terms of quality, et cetera, and, and innovation. So is it a question of whether or not it could take out an Axie Infinity? You know, listen, Axie is, you know, killing it, but this is one of those projects that has a lot of depth and definitely has a lot of interest and I want to get to it. Obviously, the market cap is holding at about a half a billion, 457 million. And we've got a really good look at some of these uh, markets. I want to kind of go to the three month right here just to show the run up of Alluvium. You can kind of see where this has moved from. The question is really, and a lot of people are asking is, can Alluvium be on this kind of tear? If you look at this long term, we may look back on Alluvium and say, man, I wish I'd have got into it in November. We may also look back on this and, and look at a crash. So we are gonna dive into what to look for on Alluvium and kind of where it potentially could go. I wanna to get to a couple of things here around what is Alluvium. Uh, it's an open world fantasy battle game built on Ethereum blockchain, often touted as the first AAA game on Ethereum. It looks to provide basically a source of entertainment for casual gamers and also the hardcores. This is one of those games that potentially could be the breakout game. Not that Axie Infinity may be not considered the breakout game, mainly because of its simplicity of how the gameplay is done. This is a much more complex uh, game that really starts to move into what I think is more mainstream gaming. And that is going to be the big question is if Alluvium can actually pull this off and get into full mainstream gaming, then this could be one of those early flyers that really starts to shake up the gaming world uh, when it comes to NFT gaming. And really what makes it unique, I wanna kinda go to this and, and just highlight this little area right here, cause there's some cool aspects to it. Um, unlike most other blockchain power games, Illumin features a full 3D environment, so it's visual and inter visually entertaining. Over 100 unique alluvials, uh, which are found scattered throughout various regions. Uh, it does have a layer two integration. Uh, it is secured by Ethereum. It's built on Immutable X, which is another project that you should probably take a look at right now, IMX. A layer two solution that is designed to help, designed to help scale applications with NFT functionality. Immutable, I think, has uh, another opportunity. We didn't pull data on Immutable, but we definitely want uh, you guys to be aware of it, and mainly because of the fact that it's so connected here with Alluvium. Uh, it does feature built-in decentralized uh, exchange platform, appropriately named Illuvidex. <laughs> I love these names. And this, of course, can be used for exchanging assets within the game. 5% fee is deducted from each sale funneled into the rewards pool for ILV stakers. So it's got a great uh, model yield farming, total of 3 million uh, Illuvium, equivalent to basically 30% of maximum supply, 10 million tokens are allocated. And then yield farming program, these will be distributed over a period of three years to users contributed liquidity and through various partner reward schemes. So I think they're going to come up with some uh, strategies here that will really kind of take the gaming aspect of this into a very unique place. Now, it's not necessarily an exact you know, model per se of what Axie is trying to do, but it definitely has a lot of uniqueness around it. You take that with what's happening in uh, just the space overall, and you've got something that really potentially could be uh, very interesting. And I want to kind of go to here. It's basically, this is something that gets into the creatures of what was uh, talking about in, in terms of alluvials. Uh, you can be captured by players, best of them battle 
and nurse them back to health. So, I mean, it has a lot of that kind of, a lot of what you might see coming out of the big gaming houses in terms of its strategy around battle play and so on, but for, for battle uh, gameplay. So I do think that that's kind of a cool thing. Remember, this has been in development since early uh, or 2020. It's being built by a worldwide team of more than 40 individuals. Uh, co-founder, serial entrepreneur, early, early uh, cryptocurrency adopter. This is Kieran Warwick, who is very well known in the space. Uh, and he also was the brothers of Kane Warwick, who is the co-founder of the DeFi platform Synthetic. So a lot of cr uh, credibility here in terms and and, you know, when we look at some of these altcoins, always look at the teams, always follow their LinkedIn, take a look at their history. If they've been involved in any other kind of projects, it doesn't necessarily have to be blockchain, but if any kind of tech project that is of notoriety to the industry, it may not necessarily be inside uh, DeFi or even NFTs, but if they've done something in the space, uh, definitely a lot there. Uh, it has blockchain elements. It's also a akin to a full-fledged video game. It's accessed through a downloadable desktop app, app and, but will also have a range of supporting DeFi applications surrounding, including we talked earlier about the yield farm and, and the uh, DEX, which is going to be within it. Um, and I like just the structure of it. If you really get in and dig into it, it really has one of those X factors in a game. Now, I'm not a huge gamer, but I understand art and technology and how all of that can play into gaming. This is one of those that I think has uh, the potential. So big one there. We're going to get to the chart uh, shortly on where this one could fall. I want to jump over to another one you guys should be watching. This way it'll give you guys time to mainly kind of jump in and do a little research as we're doing the video here. Remember, we're doing these market movers like this. Uh, the key thing is this is, um, it's our own research. It's our own proprietary data when we look at sentiment but it's not investment advice. So hopefully this is getting you educated in the area of what you're gonna look at in terms of altcoins, and it, and it sets you on a journey, a path, which is half the fun, I think, in terms of really learning about some of these new tokens and or even some of the tokens that have been around for a bit, but you're learning when they're gonna mature, because that's exactly what happened with Axie Infinity. So let's jump over to one called Perpetual Protocol. This is another one. Um, that really is, you know, market cap, one billion, I understand. Not a small one, but definitely one that you should be on the lookout right now. It is down a little bit over the past uh, few months. And I want you to pay attention here to where this is going, because this one I think has an opportunity here of doing some potential uh, traction and movement. And again, Perpetual Protocol, a very interesting project. Let me jump into a little bit more about what this one is about. And when you look at Perpetual Protocol, it was basically launched in 2019. Let me zoom in on that so you can guys kind of follow along. Under originally name of Strike Protocol, uh, builds on an Uniswap inspired automated market maker, an AMM designed that constant product curve. Uh, Perpetual's liquidity pool is virtualized, determined algorithmically. We've talked to other people who are doing algorithmic uh, stable coins and algorithmic, algorithmic valuations, which I think is a very interesting approach to some of these projects. Rather than rely on liquidity to determine the curve of a given market, what Perpetual will do is programmatically set up the update parameters in the AMM. And to me, that's really what the uniqueness is around per, uh, PERP. It's uh, basically its ID. The team claims, though, claims that that's going to have the first virtual AMM which enables markets uh, with no makers while still guaranteeing on-chain liquidity. This is where it gets a little bit of a far reach for me, but at the same time, I look at what technology has done in blockchain, and it's really moved a lot. The insurance fund is guaranteed by holders of the native token perp. The insurance fund is used to cover any expected losses, etc. And the cool thing here is at launch, perp will support Bitcoin, ETH, and Link, Chainlink, and can onboard other synthetic assets such as coal, uh, gold, crude oil, and other fiat currencies through governance in the future. This is going to get interesting if it can start to go off the blockchain and really become kind of a full-fledged AMM across both virtual aspects, which I think is one of its most unique characteristics in where this is potentially going. But before we do, let's take a look at today's uh, show sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital the number one crypto IRA and 401k platform in America. They've got a lot of cool things happening on the platform 
that are really going to be uh, very special for you guys to take a, a take part of. And if you are in the idea of long-term holding and also in general, because you can trade in and out within your, your IRA, within iTrust, but just getting your Bitcoin or getting a certain amount of Bitcoin or some other assets, digital currencies, into iTrust, which are uh, going to essentially enable you guys to really look at a long-term play here for your kids' college fund, for whatever it might be, your own retirement, those kind of things. The cool thing is you've got tremendous tax advantages on being able to park a certain amount. Obviously, I want you to go to your financial advisor, find out what's best for you in your strategy. But the good thing is, is a certain amount of dollars can be parked in here in terms of a tax advantage. Uh, low cost, only 1% of trading on the fee. Gold, it's a $50 over spot per ounce, which is a really great rate. Liquidity, 24 hours a day. That gives you that whole flexibility where a lot of IRAs, you can't do that uh, because you're obviously trading in the stock. So you're, you know, you're, you're at, at the call of the market, which is a big deal. The other thing is, is you can look at the, um, just some of the things they're doing. Chainlink, which is a huge uh, addition. You've got Polkadot, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. All of these, by the way, I hold. And added Cardano, and then also physical gold. Uh, digital asset wallet providers, world's leading institutional cold storage provider. That's done by Coinbase. Curve is also in here. Cold storage eliminates single points of failure. Great stuff. And if you've not got some of their uh, research, they do a great job in educating their customers and keeping you up to speed of what's happening in the space. This is one of those things when I look at something like a kind of um, set it and forget it, this is one of those kinds of projects that where I'm looking at long term, um, this is not for you to say, hey, I want to go put my Bitcoin in there and then sell it. If Bitcoin gets, hits 100, I just want to sell it. No, you you want to look at a five year, a 10 year, a 15 year old, a year hold here which can you imagine where Bitcoin will be in 15 years? That's the kind of opportunity that sets into this. And you've got the opportunity to move uh, money, fiat, and or other currencies into your system. And eventually there's going to be a lot of flexibility with that. Right now you can only go with a, a transfer of an IRA or fiat dollars. But eventually I think there's going to be a lot of more flexibility in, in these kinds of projects that are out there in terms of uh, crypto IRAs. Other thing is that you only get... Uh, I want to kind of talk about some of the, the ways it works because this is something that I think a lot of people forget on just how easy this is to do. Very fast setup, uh, easy to jump on, and really kind of, let's look at their three fund. This is another one to kind of walk you through the three ways to fund your IRA. Very simple. So when they partnered with us, we were looking at trying to look at who was kind of best in class. And after a lot of research, this is kind of where we landed. I trust it really kind of showed they had uh, just a next level opportunity. So you can transfer an existing IRA, you can roll over an employee plan, an employer plan, which is uh, a good one. And then, then you can just do your traditional uh, contribution of new funds. So there are ways to move it in there. And it's a great opportunity because you can obviously start to move that into um, you know, Bitcoin and or crypto digital assets. So Make sure and use our code below for a free month. Uh, so hit the link below, use Paul Barron, and uh, that's the best thing you can do in terms of long-term crypto investment for your retirement or for other aspects of your life. You need to diversify a lot in the kinds of holdings that you do within digital assets. I trust a great place to do it. All right, let's jump over to another project here called Proton. Now Proton XPR, is another one that actually came to us. We've had this brought up to us a couple of times on the show during live streams of people wanting to take a look at it. We promise that we take a look at it and we're doing that. Proton trading now at four cents. You've got a little bit of downtrend here. I want to go to the three month kind of just to show where this little baby has moved from because this one has definitely been a skyrocket ride for some of you. And this is one of those projects that is like an axie almost, I feel, in the, not like what they do, but in the sense of its growth and its ascent to where it is. Lots of movement, uh, but definitely had an opportunity to really be in uh, at, a, at a point really that was literally at a 10X type scenario. So these are the kind of things you want to be looking for. Launched in San Francisco, XPR is a new public blockchain and smart contract platform designed for both consumer applications and peer-to-peer -peer payments. This is the thing that draws me in to Proton a little bit more. 
peer-to-peer is a very, very interesting aspect because eventually when we see mass adoption, we will not see mass adoption easily going to wallet to wallet. The complexity of getting a wallet address, doing that kind of transfer, and I know there's some things, other technologies out there that are helping to simplify that, but peer-to-peer will be one of the key things that people will really adapt to quickly. Think of Zelle, Venmo, PayPal, those kind of scenarios that really kind of eliminate all these problems for the layman operator. And this is going to be primarily, remember, you guys are watching this show. You are in the 1% to 2% of the population that understands what's happening right now before our very eyes. 98% of the people out there do not have an idea or even a clue of where this is going. If you're watching this for the first time and you're just getting into Bitcoin, it's not that we're saying, hey, you should be paying more attention. This is a process. It's a journey that you're going to take. And I think Proton has got an interesting approach on this with public blockchains and peer-to-peer, especially on consumer applications, because that's going to be something that I think really will play into that. Uh, With a financial settlements layer that also uses uh, directly linked the identity with fiat fiat accounts. So that's going to give you basically a digital ID over to the fiat account. So you'll be able to pull funds, buy crypto, use that in all kinds of apps. This is why I think this one has and has seen the kind of growth that you're seeing right here on chart. All right, so quickly, let's jump over to the sentiment. I know everybody wants to see this. This is our trading view. And again, just to explain what the sentiment data is, this is our proprietary data where we track sentiment across a variety of uh, social media outlets. Uh, We've been doing this for eight years now, and we've been able to really refine the measurement of tracking keywords and use cases of these uh, keywords, especially in crypto, it works very well. And sentiment gives us something that is a precursor to where something is going, meaning it's a leading indicator. Then you have this thing uh, that we call amplification, which is looking at the amplification of where the sentiment is flowing. And it's kind of like the network effect. Raul Paul t- talks about this, Pal talks about this a lot in terms of the network effect and Metcalf's law. And it's exactly the same exact thing in terms of how this works. It's how social media works. It's how uh, virality starts working with any kind of content. It's the same model. You're doing it in an amplification where you can kind of uh, look at targeting it and look at the weight of where your sentiment is coming from and be able to look at a forward leaning indicator, which is what amplification does. So AMP on this one, 68, excuse me, sentiment 6821. AMP was a little lower on 60, uh, 6244. These numbers right here, typically in the 60s, to make it easy, is tells me we have a little bit of flat movement, which is what we've seen. And this is all was forecasted prior to it actually moving into the zone. So we do see a little bit of flatness right here before we might see an uptrend toward the end of October. So if you're looking at alluvium, opportunity here, maybe to start looking at an entry point if you are looking at a long-term hold. All right, so just to stay in order of the analysis that we did, let's jump over here to the perp chart. Uh, This one is a little different because it's got an amp score that's about to flip on the sentiment, meaning this is an uptrend. So this uptrend that we're seeing right now on perp looks like it's gonna hold out through the end of October maybe into November, we could see that trend moving uh, nicely. So this is another one of those projects that you want to keep a real close eye on if you're looking at some altcoin shopping in November. Last up was the XPR, which is Proton. This is the one we showed you just a minute ago, showing you that massive growth right here. And you can kind of see this sentiment. And this one actually did the flip right here, which was in October 9th through October 12th, and when a flip occurs, you see parabolic moves, which is exactly what happened. Now, we'll have a little bit of flatness here, but we do see a little bit a little bit more uptrend for Proton, and I think this one is just getting started. This is one of those, during the altcoin season, now don't, don't get me wrong, all of these coins, in many cases, once you're past altcoin season, you're going to see massive corrections here, so you need to be cautious. I know I am in any kind of investment that I'm doing in the altcoins because there, there there is a time for them and they are basically built and driven off of what's happening in the network effect. So just to cover all of those uh, and hitting on them again, let me just kind of run through those. Alluvium, we talked about that one, 711.64 currently. 
a great market cap at you know basically half a billion right there. Let's look over here at Perp. Perp also holding in right there uh, a billion one on their market cap 17. This one's a little bit more flat, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, and then last, of course, was our little friend Proton and Proton XPR trading in at uh, four cents right now. Lots of activity. The question is whether or not it can hold throughout the cycle during this bull run. So we're going to try to get more and more of these, uh, these projects like this, do a lot more analysis on these, give you guys some of the detailed sentiment that really helps pick these, hopefully in advance, right before you do it. And we've done it before with Polkadot, Ax or excuse me, Polkadot, Avalanche, I'm trying to think back through our, our history here, uh, Polygon, a lot of which we've called and hit dead on. And right now we're in a current cycle with Bitcoin that is dead on as well. Make sure and check out some of our videos on our Bitcoin analysis through October and November, because that one is going to be a big one. Last point is you've got to get into the diamond circle. We are giving away digital asset rewards. Right now I may do another one this week. And we just gave away $500 in Cardano on last Friday. It's free for you to join. The cool thing is you're going to get digital asset rewards, the opportunity to get some of those. And best of all, you're going to get some education, our email, which will be custom picks and things from me directly over to you. And of course, you'll be able to get those kind of insights. A lot of other things coming over on the Diamond Circle. Just click the link below or go to paulbaronetwork.com and you'll see it. If you have an idea for a show, drop them in the comments below. I'll see you next time right here on TechPath.